uh, there's a couple of buzzwords that have been in use in church circles for the past uh, two or three years now, missionary disciples or missionary discipleship. And um, it's tempting to just allow that to take on this sort of um, kitschy, you know, 2015 type, this is the thing we're talking about now. But we trace that in many ways, not just to the document from Pope Francis, uh, Evangelii Gaudium, where he speaks about an option for missionary discipleship. But we see that this particular understanding of a disciple goes back to the very roots of Christ's ministry on earth, about choosing people who would go forth to proclaim the good news. And that this, this missio, this being sent, is constitutive of discipleship. That it means that we can't be disciples and think that we're not going to be sent to do something somewhere. It's impossible to think that. We cannot think that simply sitting in our pew is enough. And whenever I contemplate the apostles or any of those who have done missionary work, it's been, <clears throat> it's been so amazing to me to think about their lives and, <coughs> excuse me, to imagine them going out and using their, their experience of Christ Jesus and what had happened with him and with them, that that was what they shared with people. A lot of times we get really stuck on saying, well, I don't know enough, or I, I don't have all the training, or I don't have the, I can't really speak very well about things, and I can't get in front of a whole bunch of people and talk. And, and that really wasn't what Christ was looking for either. I mean, he pulled four fishermen, right, from their work. He's looking for people who are willing to open their hearts to a deep relationship with him, and in, in doing so, in, in sharing that relationship, to be willing to be sent out to show people what happens when we invite Christ into our lives. The core of my office, the work that I do here, is to help everyone realize that we are all called to be these apostles, these missionary disciples. And that catechesis happens when we open our hearts to that deep relationship with Christ, which enkindles in us a desire to understand everything we can about what we believe, and to be able to share that with another person, to be able to open our lives and give to people a reason to hope. In Henry Nouwen's Wounded Healer, he talked about how the wounded healer doesn't go around trying to fix people's lives, saying, oh, your life is all messed up, let me, let me tell you how to fix it. He said, that's not the point. The wounded healer goes to a person who is struggling and says, this is how Christ has helped me in my life. And I'm going to journey with you so that you come to know who Jesus is. And that same Jesus can help you with what you're struggling. He said, it's that witness of the wounded healer to what Christ has done to heal the wounds of his, our own selfishness, our own sinfulness. That is where we become that wounded healer, that missionary disciple. When we go to people who live without hope and say, well, this is why my life with Christ brings me hope. When we go to people who are struggling to overcome the difficulties in their life, and we say, this is how Christ has helped me. I'm going to journey with you until Christ can become a part of your life. That's how the apostles worked. They went to these communities. They shared what they had experienced with Christ. And the, the fire that was in their, their eyes as they spoke about what had happened drew people to a warmth that doesn't come from this earth, but only from the work of the Spirit in the hearts of all who heard them. That has not changed for any of us. And we're all called to do the same. But after 2,000 years, 
we've had an opportunity to really reflect deeply over the centuries about what we believe and why we believe it and how to put it into practice. And all that richness is available to us. But if we've never heard Jesus speak our name to call us to follow him, and it becomes difficult to reason why we would ever learn all these things. And so a lot of what I do is helping people connect on that deeper level to Christ. And it has been such an amazing journey to witness people who, after having an experience like that, say, oh my gosh, I get it now. I get it. And their, their whole perspective has changed. And they... they they seek out understanding and knowledge and the ability to put into practice what they've learned. That's the joy of what I get to do. And yet I would hope that all of us would have in some way a similar way of living our lives or sharing what Christ is doing in our lives to help those who are burdened, who live without hope, who live in darkness, who still live shackled to sin we can open our hearts and see how Christ has touched our lives, has helped us or is helping us overcome those difficulties. And to be ready to say yes when Jesus says, I need you to go out to proclaim the good news. One of the beautiful changes in the Roman Missal was a couple of editions of new sending forth formulas. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your life. I love that one. Go in the peace of Christ and announce to all the world the good news. What a wonderful and beautiful gift to be given that as we take from the Eucharist the grace of God to share with the world. And so, brothers and sisters, I pray that as we encounter Christ in this Eucharist, we open our ears to hear him call our name hear him call us to go out to proclaim the good news and to share the wonderful things that he is doing in our lives with those who need him.